What's up, maniacs? Got a special treat for you today. We're here at the vault of Scottsdale. I'm gonna do an interview with Ron and let you check this super cool place out and see what it's all about. Follow along. Ron, nice to meet you. Thanks nice for taking you. some time uh, for you. us today. This is a really, really cool place. What can you tell us about it? Well, we sold a healthcare company, had spent 30 years in healthcare. It took me about two weeks on the couch to figure out I wasn't wired to retire. <laughs> so we bought land and it took us two years for permits. I was also out of space at my old building for just my cars and stuff. So it started as a, let's build a bigger building for me, turned into, 16,000 square feet to store cars for other people, rent it out for private events. What led you, what gave you the idea to start start letting well, other people bring their cars um, to you? I was looking to either buy a business or start another business. And I've always loved cars since I was tiny. I've had experiences with other storage companies and I knew that I could do it better. Just by offering better customer service, make a place that everyone feels welcome when they come, their cars are safe, they're taken care of. And so it was just kind of the perfect fit to kill two birds with one stone, give me a place to hang out with my cars and share it with you know other people, whether it's storing cars. We had a Formula One watch party here with 50 people here oh. yesterday with a car club I belong to. Fun. So it's about community and people. Yeah, absolutely. And as car guys, we know we love our cars. We love our families, yeah. but we love our cars. And we want to know that our cars are very well taken yes. care of. So I can definitely see a, a kind of a niche market here for doing something like that. That's awesome. The, uh, the name The Vault came about because one, no one else in Arizona had that name. <laughs> um, I had uh, started looking on the internet and searching for different companies and uh, there was a vault of San Diego and okay. I like the ring of the name so turned into Vault of Scottsdale as well as provide the best security that uh, I could do in terms of uh, you'd never know it by driving by what's in here. No, you would, you know, it's very nonchalant, got a nice sign out front, uh, a gate to even get in the parking lot. It took me a couple of tries to, to figure out where I was even supposed to pull in this morning. So mm -hmm. it was- That's uh, on purpose. I apologize, but that's on purpose. No, that's, that's awesome. It really is. And then you walk in and there's just all these beautiful signs and glorious cars, very, very cool place. Thank you. So saying you're a car guy, what was your, uh, what was your first, first favorite car? We've all had a lot of favorites. We have, so I was five years old in a town of 500 people in the Midwest in Illinois farm country. And I'll date myself, but 1972. <laughs> and my next door neighbor had a 289 and 427 Cobra and used to give us kids rides in it every nice. Saturday. In the winter, when there's three feet of snow on the ground, he'd raise up the garage door, start it up, and let us sit in it and pretend we were driving it. <laughs> so for me, that was my first, that's seared into my brain. That Cobra ha I've had for 15 years was kind of that homage to that first experience in a okay. car. Nice, that is super cool. Uh, my first experience like that, my dad's friend packed himself and four of us kids into a little two-seater MGB and he took us out on the back roads and taught us how to drive mm -hmm. a stick. So one of us was in his lap and two of us were in the little package tray behind the seat yep. while I've one of us was before. driving. Yep. <laughs> that was how we did things back then. <laughs> that's how we so, did things, yeah. Yeah, the uh, that's where, you know, to me, cars are nice, but it's about the memories yeah. that you make with other people, friends, family. Uh, it's that connection of combining them all together. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I grew up in the garage with my dad restoring old cars. Um, so I've always loved the cars, but you know, making those memories, not just with your parents, but with friends and family, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, community. It really is community, yep. absolutely. So out of all these awesome cars you have in here, what is yours today? Uh, it'd be easier maybe to ask which one is my favorite child than the cars. <laughs> all right. But uh, <laughs> no offense to my kids if they watch this. Um, I have to say it'd be between 
There's a blue and white 05 Ford GT. I bought it when we sold our company. My wife and I each agreed that we would hold off on buying anything, even though we were able to, we'd hold off buying anything until we sold the company. And so it was at the time the most expensive car I'd ever bought, um, but it was one I'd wanted for a very long time. And then back up on the stackers up there is a fully restored 65 GT350 Shelby. Oh, nice. That I've wanted one since I was 15. And kind of the same thing, a neighbor who, or not a neighbor, but someone in town had one and just remember that car sticking with me as the original Shelby. Brings back a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's been the most challenging part of the vault for you? Nothing Nothing comes super easy. So there have to have been a couple of hiccups along the way. Well, what's the, what's the hardest part? Getting permits through COVID when half the city mm. shut down took two years. Um, and new construction, which they're extremely uh, particular about in Scottsdale. Um, I was fortunate to this be my full-time job for uh, basically two and a half years. Okay. Here every day on site, once we started construction, I ended up subbing out and handling the flooring, all the decoration in the lounge, the flooring in the lounge, the cabinets, appliances. And so that was how we kept on schedule because contractors, that's usually the last thing they think about. Yeah. I knew how long the lead time was, so I did all of that myself. Um, so I'd say the permit process, once we got open, it's been fun. We've been open 14 months. Uh, I have with cars that are committed that we will be fully packed out for the summer with as many cars as I can put in here. That's excellent. So from that standpoint, and we've had a lot of events from celebration of life, anniversary parties, to a lot of corporate events. Hennessy was down here for their Venom oh, unveil a year ago for the first time was unveiled here. They came back this auction week and brought their Revolution track car, a Roadster and the coupe of the Venom F5. Okay. Wow. And then we did a, full fashion show with Ford Modeling Agency last year for Scottsdale Fashion Week. Really? So we've had about every kind of event you can think of. <laughs> That's a wide variety. So it's always different, meet lots of great people. Yeah. We've done events from 20 to 250. And you did a great job on your, on your Thank lounge, you. by the way. It's I, uh, I wanted it to feel uh, a little bit like home and less, you know, there's certain parts of obviously the steel and the glass are modern, but obviously we used a lot of natural materials yeah. in there so it felt a little bit more relaxed and you come in sit down kick up your feet and watch a race yeah. uh in full surround sound yeah you guys just allow visitors to to come in and and check out your showroom or how no does that not work? really we're not really open to the public okay. um other than in the fall through the spring we do a monthly cars and coffee okay. it's open to the public gotcha. so um but if someone calls and says can i just come by and view it for the privacy of our members, as well as just safety of the cars, because you never know who's coming in. Yeah. That's not something we do. I didn't really realize that, because uh, like I said, I follow your Instagram page and it always shows a lot of people around. But well, most of those videos events. are from Cars and Coffee yeah. events, or pictures okay. are from Cars and Coffee okay. events. Where do you, do you have a bunch of cars out in your parking lot? Uh, yeah, that, well, the parking lot is full down the spaces, parked against the building up and down the street from one end of the street to the other. Okay. We'll get a couple hundred people and we'll have, there's 25 spots and we'll have 40 cars in the parking lot. That's awesome. Um, where it's kind of standing room only in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, so what's been the, the wildest vehicle that you've, that you've housed in here? Uh, well, there are two vehicles now that are my customers. So behind over your shoulder is a Ford Ranchero built by Condigate Design featured on their television show last year. Okay. That is 2,500 horsepower. Holy cow. Uh, the motor alone is 1,500, plus a couple of very giant turbos on it. And the turbos are in the trunk. Just, yes. Or not uh, trunk, in the, in the bed. bed. Sorry, Ranchero, um, in the bed. Did... So not your average Ranchero. No. Um, and then uh, the other would be this 2,500 horsepower drag 65 Mustang. You'll notice it has full slicks, yeah. full roll cage, It'll do 180 and a quarter mile in eight Ooh. seconds. Nice. So those are probably two of the the highest horsepower cars we've ever had. And that here. is a very cherry looking Mustang. What's the oldest car that you've had in here so far? Right behind you is a 1952 Curtis. Frank Curtis built race cars for Indy teams. 
okay. um, in the 40s and early 50s, and he decided to build street cars to mimic the Indy cars. They only built 24 of the cars. Oh, wow. Someone else took over and built another half dozen. So there's 30 or so that were ever built. I purchased that from a good friend of mine who'd owned it 10 years. So that Curtis is probably one of your rarest cars that you've it had is, in here as well. by that, far. Another neat one that I saw back here, uh, I believe is one of yours as well as the Alfa Romero race car. Yes, that was built by Ant Anstead. It was on Wheeler Dealers and now part owner in Radford Motors. Okay. It builds a hand-built car based on a Lotus. He built that during COVID uh, as a replica of the 1938 Alpha 158. Okay. Um, in 51, Fangio won his first Grand Prix slash Formula One championship in that uh, same or a car like that. There are only three left in existence. They built six. Wow. They also won every race it entered for 13 years. Oh, wow. Um, so awesome. that is a replica, pretty close replica. I've got some black and white pictures of the originals. Pretty close replica, 30s, open wheel. You know, they race with no seat belts, no helmet, um, bias supply tires. And in 51, that car did 160, 170 mile an hour and it weighed 1,300 pounds. Living on the edge. So they did <laughs> leave up, live on the edge. During World War II, uh, the Alpha and many other car manufacturers took their bodies and the engines and hid the bodies, engines, frames in different countries in barns all over Europe to keep them from the Nazis. And then after World War II, they went about trying to put them all back together. So there are only three left in the world, one in the Alpha Museum, one in Europe, and one in a private collection in Northern California. And they're about $30 million. So that's as wow. close as I'll ever get to an open wheel 30s race car. You know what really caught my eye about that car? You left the exhaust on it. Oh, absolutely. I know you're driving this car. The... That's one thing I love, and that's one thing that, uh, that that we encourage at Maniac's Garage, is not just get out there and build something of your own. But oh, you gotta drive it. Get out there and drive it. Yep. You gotta go drive it. It's no good if you don't drive it. Exactly. So, Ron, where do you see this business going in the future? Well, the without giving away too much to our competition, I do have some plans for future <laughs> yeah. expansion. But there is a never ending supply of people moving into Scottsdale that are car fanatics. So uh, they're, of all the storage places in town, they're all pretty full. Um, the car condo uh, concept has taken off very quickly in Arizona and they sell out before they even finish building them. We may do something in other states, you know. I've ha already had inquiries on whether I wanted to ever franchise the yeah. concept and help out with the development of it. Um, awesome. In the same token, uh, I ran a company with 45 locations in 10 states and about 350 employees. So I've done the grind and yeah. I'm not ready to retire, <laughs> but I don't know that I wouldn't work too hard. That's a big task. Well, as a thank you for your time today, Ron, I'd like to give you a, oh, a Maniac's Garage hat. Thank for you your, very much. Uh, I'm sure you've got a collection of hats somewhere. I do well. have a collection of hats. <laughs> So uh, hopefully it fits you well, and uh, yep. we thank you very much for your oh, time. Thank you. Really cool place. If you got a car, you need somewhere to store it in Scottsdale, this is the guy to call. How can people get a hold of you? Yes, uh, our phone number is 480-761-3800. You can find us on our website at vaultofscottsdale.com. Uh, Instagram is vaultofscottsdale.com. Um, and then uh, they can always reach out and message through the website or through Instagram and it comes straight to me. All right, thanks for watching Maniacs, hope you enjoyed.